Hi, I'm Hunter Allen with Peaks Coaching Group, and guess what? I've got the new edition of Training Racing with a Power Meter in my hands right now. The power of knowledge and the knowledge of power is right here. You can get a copy. This is a great edition. We've worked really hard on this. Dr. Stephen McGregor, Dr. Andrew Coggin, myself came out with this, and it's really, we've got some great, great little nuggets in here that you're going to like. I'm going to give you a nugget right now. Well, many of you know about performance manager chart and what the performance manager chart is, and that is me uh, measuring your chronic training load, your acute training load, your training stress balance, and also uh, some of your best as well. So uh, if we look at this and we say, okay, this is our, our chronic training load right here, our CTL, Okay, then we also have our ATL, right? Our chronic training load is over 42 days. That's generally what we're looking at is we're looking at this as a 42 day rolling at or exponentially weighted average. Then this is our ATL, okay? This is our ATL. This is much more fluctuating. This is really what is our last seven days, okay? So then we might see kind of our last seven days of, of training right here. This is our ATL and this is our acute training load, okay? So acute training load is, is, a, is really, our CTL, you know, that's our fitness, that's our FTP, that's how fit we are right now. Our ATL really is our fatigue, how sore do the muscles feel today, okay? Now, we need, there are a couple of constants in here. So our, our CTL, we usually leave at 42 days, and our ATL, this is generally defaulted to seven days, okay? But that means is what that and what that means is on day zero you have no training. On day one you go out and you do a hundred TSS points. By day seven you're completely recovered from that day one hundred TSS. Okay, so it takes you seven days. Now, if you're less than nineteen years old, you probably are going to want to make sure that you know if you're less than nineteen, then this is going to be somewhere in the two to four range. Right, this changes to two to four. You recover so much faster, right? You're young, you're fresh, you can recover really quick. Now, if you're between 20, all right, and 29, then this is more like four to seven, okay? So there you go, four to seven, you're in that same range there. All right, once you get to be about 30, okay, to 49, then we're gonna move it up a little bit, six to eight, and then once we get to 50, to 59, then we're now at seven to 10, okay? So what this means is when you change this ATL number here to 10, that means that it takes you 10 days to recover from the same effort that if you were 19, you'd only recover from in two or four days, okay? So that's a, a, a time to recovery is essentially what this is. It's an important metric to change. Now, as you get older than that, okay, so we got 60, to 69, then we're looking at nine to 12 days, and then when we get 70, or sorry, 60 to 65, okay, and then when we got 66 to 70 plus, then we're really looking at 11 to 14 days, okay? So that 14 day is really the longest that we extend the ATL out to. Again, that takes you 14 days to recover from what you used to be able to recover from in two to four days when you were 19. Uh, aging sucks, huh? All right, anyhow. So that's one of the concepts and one of the charts we have, or one of the tables that we have is recommendations table, I believe it's 9.1 in the book, and check it out. It's in the third edition of Training Racing with a Power Meter. Hope you've enjoyed this little quick short uh, video. Thanks a lot, I'm Hunter Allen, Peaks Coaching Group.